All right, guys, so I'm here today to show you how to make a normal probability plot and how to tell if data is normal before you do a confidence interval for means. So here goes. Number one, you have to put your grades, your data, whatever your data is, in order, lowest to highest, ascending order. Then you're going to create a column called rank, one, two, three. Since I have 10 data points, it'll go one through 10. Now, the next column will be cumulative probability. Cumulative probability will always be the rank minus 0.5. And then we're going to put that in parentheses. And we're going to divide by the number of numbers or the sample size. And the sample size in this case is 10. Okay. That formula can get copied to all 10 columns. So that number minus 0.5 divided by 10, that number divided by 0.5, uh, minus 0.5 divided by 10, etc. Okay, that's called cumulative probability. All of these numbers should be between 0 and 1. They are probabilities. This is called cumulative probability. And what we're doing is basically finding the probability of each of these items. And so 0 0.05, 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.35, they should be very equally spaced, if that makes sense to you. Now, we need to find the z-score for this probability. We need to find the z-score for this probability, and that is going to be the command inverse, uh, excuse me, norms inverse, N-O-R-M-S-I-N-V, okay? And it's going to ask for a probability. This is what's called a reverse lookup. This is where you find probability in the z-score table. And the result of that is a z-score. And we're going to hit enter. Okay. And a probability of 0.05 should have a z-score of about negative 1.65. Now, because that probability references this cell, I can just simply copy this formula into the next nine cells. And what do we get? We get a bunch of z-scores. Now, the last thing you're going to do is you're going to take this first column and you're going to copy this column. You're going to paste it over here. And you don't have to do this. It just makes life easier, okay? And I've already done this chart. I'm going to delete this chart just to show you how to do it. There we go. All right. So what we want to do now, folks, is we want to actually take these two things, z-score, Okay, and to find cumulative probability, you have to have rank. To find z-score, you have to have probability. So that's why we're doing all of this. You're going to graph z-score versus your data. Okay, so you'll go to insert, and we're going to graph a scatter plot. Okay, so there's our scatter plot. And then as we've done previously, we're going to add a trend line. And that's going to be a linear trend line, and I want to display that equation on the chart okay so there we go okay so there's our equation if we needed it okay now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to find the correlation coefficient okay so correlation coefficient between this guy and this guy it's going to give us an r value and i want that to be e11 okay we're going to compare this. So this is the correlation coefficient. We're going to compare that correlation coefficient to a critical value. If it is above a critical value, then this is a linear correlation and it meets one of our conditions. Okay. Our second condition is that there are no outliers. So to find if there are no outliers, you have to take your original data here and you have to find the minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, the max, the upper fence, and the lower fence. And then ask, are there any outliers? Okay. To find the minimum, of course, you'll say equals min. And that set of numbers. To find the quartile, first quartile, you'll say quartile, that set of numbers, and quartile number one. Okay. To find the second quartile, it'll be quartile, that set of numbers, and two, or you could use the median command. Here you'll say quartile, that set of numbers, 
and 3. And then here you can say maximum that set of numbers. Okay. And then the upper fence is going to be Q3 plus 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1. Okay. The lower fence is going to be Q1 minus 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1. Okay. Our lowest data point is above 68. Our highest data point is below 138. There are no outliers. Okay, so are there outliers? No. So there are no outliers. And if I were to show you the correlation coefficient compared to the critical value, the critical value for 10 data points is something like 0.972. So this is positively correlated. It is above the critical value. There are no outliers. Therefore, this is considered normal. We can use this data as normal data. Okay. So one more. I've got one more for you. So here goes. Um, first thing I want to do. I'm going to delete this out. So I um, was playing with this earlier. Let me delete this all out. Okay, so here goes, guys. I've given you a list of information. These could be grades. These could be anything. First thing I want you to notice, they are not in order. If you highlight your data and you come over to sort and filter, you want to sort smallest to largest. Okay. And we're going to continue with the current selection. Okay. So boom. Then your rank is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can type all these in, or once you get a pattern, Excel will follow that pattern up to 19. Cumulative probability is going to be, again, it is going to be your rank minus 0.5. And, of course, I always forget to put it in parentheses. And then that's going to be divided by, and in my case, 19 this time. Okay, and you're going to do that for all 19 data points, and all 19 data points should have a number that looks like a probability, and they should be evenly spaced. Okay, so boom, 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 all between 0 and 1. Your lowest rank should be close to 0. Your highest rank should be close to 1. That all looks good. Now you're going to find your z-score. To find your z-score, it's going to be norms inverse and that probability. Okay, boom. And you're going to see z-scores somewhere between negative 2 and 2 usually. Okay, if you see like wildly crazy z-scores, you know, 7, you may have done something wrong here. Okay. All right. So then what? By the way, you don't have to copy your first column. I just find it's easier to highlight. Um, and so I like to do it. But if you know how to highlight it without copying it, you can. But anyway. So let's copy those, let's uh, highlight those two. Okay, so there's our highlight. Insert, chart, we're gonna insert a scatter plot here. Okay, and again, we're going to add a trend line. Okay, and you don't actually have to add the trend line. You don't actually have to graph these um, unless you need this equation for something. This is just review, but you do have to have the correlation coefficient. Okay, so we're gonna say, equals Corel, and it's going to ask us for the two arrays. There's our first array. There's our second array. Boom. There's your correlation coefficient. Okay, so this is your R value, or correlation coefficient. Okay. With that info, you've got to find the critical values table, and you've got to compare this to your critical value. If this number, ah, if this number is above the critical value, this data is considered normal. If this data is below, if this number is below the critical value, then this is considered not normal and you cannot proceed with a confidence interval. Okay. So remember, you also have to check for outliers. So what would I have to do next? I would have to come down, come down here and find the minimum Q1, Q2, Q3, 
and the maximum, the upper fence and the lower fence. I'd have to find all of that. So if this correlates, if this is higher than the critical value, then I would find the five number summary, the upper fence, the lower fence, and decide if there were any outliers. If there were no outliers, then I could proceed and say that this data is normal. Okay. So I hope this helps. Please let me know if you have any questions, guys. And uh, remember that the only time I'm going to ask you to check if a sample is normal is if you have access to something like Excel to do that. So don't worry about having to try to do this by hand. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.